The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good evening, everyone. Uh, this is Mr. Taylor with Young Engineers Today. I hope everyone's having a wonderful uh, Monday thus far. I uh, hope everyone had a great weekend. Henry, I am doing well. I hope you are doing well as well, too. Um, now, if you can hear me, please raise your hand. All right. Say so everyone can hear me. I say multiple hands. Hello to everyone. Hello, Stephen and Jose, Max. Hope all of you are doing well tonight. Uh, now, let me put your hands down. If you can see my screen, please raise your hands. All right. Luke, I see you're back. All right, great. All right, multiple people can see my screen. Excellent job. All right, now, uh, first off, if you were in Raleigh uh, this weekend, you had a lab with Mr. Dubik. Hopefully you enjoyed your lab and it went well. Um, this week, uh, if you're in Charlotte, you'll be having a lab on Thursday. All right. And our upcoming labs will be using the NXT Mindstorm robot from uh, Lego. So looking forward to your upcoming labs. All right. Uh, to answer some of your questions already, yes, you are going to need your snap circuits with you tonight. All right. I know, Henry, you asked about this, and same with Max. All right, Max, you won't be at the lab. All right. Thanks for letting me know, Max. All right, Stephen stated. Uh, all right, thanks for telling me you're going to get it. If you need to go get your snap circuits, please do that. If you don't, if you have your snap circuits already with you, raise your hand. All right, Evan, you got yours. Luke has his. Max has his. All right, Stephen Jose have theirs. All right, Zachary, uh, Taha, uh, Henry, everyone else, please let me know once you have your snaps. We're going to see Evan, you got yours. All right, while people are getting their snap circuits, last week we taught a lot about uh, this, our basic two circuits, uh, series and parallel circuits. Um now, uh, as a reminder, series circuits, our current, our energy, uh, run in one pathway. Uh, for example, in this first top image, if the light goes out, and if one light goes out, it breaks the circuit. So if your first light bulb goes out, the rest of them will turn off as well. Now, uh, the other type of circuit is a parallel circuit. Parallel circuit has many paths uh, for the current electricity to travel through. So if one light in this, for example, in this image goes out, the others will stay on, okay? And, and typically we see parallel circuits a lot more in electronics and other devices because they give you more options and they can support more. All right, so let's get moving. Now tonight, you're gonna, just not gonna need your snap circuits. You're gonna wanna have your books with you as well. Um, if we will possibly get them tonight, if not, we'll get to them next class. All right. Now, now first off, we're going to start off doing projects 102 and 103. All right. Um, just a quick review of battery and being in series and parallel. What I'd like you to do is build these and make observations of what's taking place. Uh, how are they working? What happens when you use the switches or buttons? And just a reminder with LEDs, anytime we use LEDs, uh, light emitting diodes, any type of diode ha has to go in a very specific direction or the energy will not work through. 
Stephen Jose, uh, to answer your question, you will be using the NXT in your lab. All right. Okay. All right. Now, if you understand my instructions about what you're doing right here, uh, raise your hand and let me know that you understand what you're going to do now. Max understands. Evan understands. Nathan understands. Luke understands. Henry. All right, good. Once you're done, let me know. Well, raise your hand. Taha knows as well. Um, let me know that you're finished as well as I want to – I'm going to call on you and tell me what took place, what the difference is that you notice or similarities. All right, go ahead. All right, Stephen and Jose, if it's different in your book, just follow the one that's up here on the screen then. All right? Thank you. And as always, I always encourage, once you have them built, if you want to do some experimentation with these, go for it. All right, see what discoveries you can make. All right, I see Max has his hand up. Uh, Max, see that you're finished. Um, call, go ahead and call on you, Max. Max, what took place in the projects? Um, in the batteries in a circuit one, what happened to mine is just if you turn the switch on, it they both go on, and if you turn them off, they both go out. And then in the batteries in parallel. Um, what happened to mine is, um, when, without the, um, without the, um, without the, um, S1 switch on, it, um, goes on, but it's a low light, mm -hmm. and when you turn it on, it's a lot brighter. All right. Excellent job. Excellent job. Because when you, each battery... We gotta remember is worth 1.5 volts. So if I'm allowing, I'm doubling my voltage. If I double my current, how much energy is going on? What's gonna to happen to that light bulb? It's oh, um, me. Yeah, Max. Yeah. Um, the it's going to get brighter. Excellent job, Max. Thank you, Max. Let's call. Go with Evan. Evan has his hand raised. 
All right. Um, Evan, what's going on? How's it coming? I was going to say that I'm done. All right. What observations did you make there? Um, I was thinking that without one of the battery packs, both the LEDs probably wouldn't be fully shined with the LED arrows. Mm -hmm. So I'm working with that right now. I'm going to replace the battery pack with a just a three. All right. Awesome job. Very good. Thank you, Evan. I'm not even turning on. All right. Are you uh, in the second one? No, the first one. Uh, make sure with LEDs, with light emitting diodes, they can only go in one direction. They have a positive and a negative side. So energy can only flow in them in one direction. Okay. All right. They're not like the L1 and L2, the light bulbs. Light bulbs, energy can flow in either direction. But with LEDs, they're very specific on the way energy flows. So those who are having problems, make sure you're double-checking your LEDs, okay? If they're going in the wrong direction, things will not work. All right? Thank you, Evan. All right, I see that Luke's done. Steve and Jose built the first one. Both LEDs turned on. Very good. All right. My question, in the first one, were both LEDs the same brightness, or was one brighter, one less bright? The Evan says the same. All right. Anyone else? So Jose, same. Henry, same. Good. Good, everyone. Um, Zach. Um, are you still oh, having difficulties or not? Hold on, you Zach. Zach, how's it going? Uh, mine didn't work. I did it exactly like it was in the book and on your screen, and it didn't work. For the first one, 102? Uh, yeah. Um, what resistor are you using? R1. Okay, uh, and the LEDs are going in the same directions? Yes. Okay. Uh, have you checked your batteries? Uh, no. All right, check your batteries. Okay. Let's see about that, okay? Thank you, Zach. Uh -huh. All right. Okay, everyone. All right. So let's um, start looking forward. Right. Now, last class, the uh, reason I'm showing these again, we did the uh, parallel circuit sound activated whistle chip as well as the police light siren. Now, can someone tell, tell me what the whistle chip does that we learned last time by doing this? All right. Uh, Evan, what's a whistle chip do, Evan? Sorry, just closing the door. Um, the whistle chip can be activated by, I think, either light or, like, you putting your finger over it or something. It's the second one. Good. It's, it's by the touch. All right, very good, very good. Do you remember doing this one last week, Evan? Yeah. Okay, good, good. All right, in the second one, what does the, uh, Henry, you like to add on to that? Henry, go ahead. No, but I have a question. All right. Um, About 102. Okay. When I took out the first battery pack and replaced it with um just some wire pieces. Okay. Um, it didn't turn on. In 102, which, uh, the B1 up top or the B1 down below? Below. And it didn't turn on. 
so right here, instead of it, uh, the D2 connecting the battery, there's a wire connecting all the way across to the first one. Yeah. All right. Um, did you double check to make sure everything snapped and you don't have a short circuit? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, uh, let's... What, um, using the R1 resistor? Yes, sir. Okay. Interesting. Um, take out the R1 resistor and see if you have enough power to uh, do both of them. Or actually, okay. take out one LED first and see if you have enough energy. Okay. All right. All right, Evan's having the same issue as you, Henry. It works. All right. It's only one LED. Okay, so what conclusion can we come to then? It t um the resistor and the D one together take um all of the power of the two batteries. Good. Yeah, it and takes the all first the power. D one. Yeah, there's not enough energy to go around. Yep. Yeah. Very good. Very good. Thank you. Great discovery, Henry, and good job, Evan, as well. All right. Thank you. All right. Now, what I'd like you guys to do, all right, Luke, you have your hand raised. All right, Luke. Yes, Luke. Luke, you're unmuted. I noticed um, also in Lynn City, the same thing happens um, to the power lines and um, modern windmills. Good, good. Great connection. Way to do a, that's an awesome correlation, Luke. Good job. Thank you very much. Very good insight. Awesome. Awesome job, everyone, thus far. All right. What I'd like you to do, um, is can someone refresh to me what a a photoresistor does? All right, what does a photoresistor do? I want to look and figure out that. I want to review that. All right, let's go with Zach. Zach, what's the photoresistor do? Um, doesn't it like sense light and darkness? All right, okay. Yeah, correct. What I want to do, just as a refresher, let's rebuild the police light siren, okay? So everyone, go ahead and build that. And what I want you to do is... Add or take away light to your uh, photoresistor. If you understand my instructions, raise your hands. All right, very good, very good, everyone. Go ahead and, and once you're done, just raise your hand, let me know, and we'll m keep moving forward after that. Okay, Henry, you have your hand raised? Yes, Henry. Can you make it a little bit bigger? I can barely see it, the numbers on it. Okay. Thank you. I still can't see the numbers on it. Thanks. That's good. All right, once you're done, raise your hand or send me a message in the text.
Taha, just follow the image up front because I numbered them incorrectly. I got um different sounds sort of. I got some I was playing around with it and I got sort of some different sirens, I guess you could say. And it's pretty cool. Hello. Uh awesome. Sorry, I had myself muted. I was listening to you and I muted myself. Okay. Uh what happened when you increased the light to the photoresistor? It got louder. Okay. What happened, and I'm going to assume that when you decrease the light, it decreased the... Sound. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Awesome. Nice job, Henry. So oh, that's what it sounds like. Good. All right. All right, so, all right, we have Evans done, with some Luke's done, all right, I think most people are starting to wrap up, let's take about another minute or so, and we'll move forward. Ah, so you had your hand raised. Calling, yeah, Ta, go ahead. You're unmuted, Ta. All right. Seems like most people are finished, so let's get moving forward. All right. Uh, what I want you to do here, our next assignment. Uh, we're going to do a parallel circuit with Space Wars. What 
you're doing the first one, and I will make this larger. You are going to basically create a circuit that allows you to change sounds by changing the amount of current that's flowing into it by using an S1 or an S2, which are your buttons and switch. Now, you're doing the same exact project for uh, the next one at below it, but all you're doing is replacing the S1 with, the, with your photoresistor. Now, also what I want you to grab is a whistle chip and experiment with using a whistle chip in replace of something else as well. All right, and I will make that larger for you. If you understand my instructions, please raise your hand. All right, a lot of people put their hands up. Excellent job. Yes, Luke. I cannot find the light switch. Uh, your S1 and S2? No, my light switch. Photoresistor. It's in the upper right or left-hand corner of your box. Yeah, I must have got it mixed up with my other ones. All right, well, I want you to take a moment and look through your other ones to see if you can find it. It typically looks, a lot of times it gets confusing because it looks a little bit like a lamp, like an L1. Also, I just experimented, and listen to this. Okay. Is that good or not? Because I didn't use the photoresistor. I what used the use? other thing. The whistle chip. Try it again. Let me uh, hear it again. Cool. cool. Very cool. I used two speakers instead of one. All and right. I switched the speakers out into different places. All right, awesome. Good, great experimentation. Well, uh, hopefully you can find your uh, photoresistor, okay? Yeah, I'm going to run upstairs and check my other box. Okay, go for it. Thank you, Luke. Taz stated his whistle chip played happy birthday. Sweet. Very cool. All If you need more time, raise your hand. 
because I need you all to, let, to help me gauge how much time to give you. Okay, Stephen and Jose need more time. Good, good. Zach, thank you. Zach needs more time as well. Good. Okay, Evan's done. Max is done. Ooh, Stephen Jose just blew their their uh, U two I I C chip um, by using two speakers. Wow. Zach's done. Um, Luke needs a little bit more time. Zachary. Okay, Zach's done. All right. Um, I want to. Would anyone like to share what? took place in this activity. All right. Zach, go ahead. Can you explain it to us? Um, well, when I took away one of the switches, mm -hmm. um, that you couldn't make another sound, a different kind of sound. Really? Yeah. Very cool. Did you try it with the photoresistor or whistle chip? No, I didn't have time. All right, go ahead. Go and try it. Okay. All right, thanks. So let's call on some other people that said they're done. Um, let's call on Max. Max, how 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 to go, Max? Um, mine. Um, I yeah, I also discovered that if you take away or if you don't use one of the um button or switches, then it can um it'll make a different sound. And uh, I tried using the um, photoresistor, and I can't find out what'll work for it. Say that one more time, because I'm trying to analyze it in my head. Oh, I've, I tried to use the photoresistor, and I can't figure out which um, thing to replace to put in the photoresistor for. Uh, the S1. Okay. All right, which it would be the, yeah, this uh, slide switch. Okay. Yeah, I just tried that. How'd that work? Uh, good. Good, good. Try it with a whistle chip as well. See what happens. Yeah. Okay. How's that work? Uh, I just I just took out S2 and replaced it with the photoresistor. Good, good. Yeah. Getting different sounds? Yeah, definitely. Awesome. Very cool. Thank you, Max. Taha. Call on Taha. He's done. All right. Taha. So what happened there? What do you think? All right, it's time. The mic's not working. All right, Brendan, no big deal that you're out here. Just get your snap circuit kits. All right, once again, Stephen Jose said, warning, do not want to blow your speakers. Do not use two speakers with your U2, okay? All right, now, this past weekend, if you were with Mr. Dubik, or if you had class with me the following week, we experimented with using a multimeter. Can someone tell me what a multimeter does? Let's go with Luke. Yes, Luke. 
What's what's a multimeter do? Um, a multimeter measures voltage like you have in that picture. Okay, good. It measures voltage. Um, thank you, Luke. Uh, Max, you have your hand up as well. Go ahead, Max. Max? Um, there is like two wires. Yeah. There's two wires in the um, uh, um, the meter, and if you like touch something with the uh, two wires, the end of the two wires, it um, depending on um, what it is, it'll show a different um, number, and that's how many volts it is. Very good. How many volts are in the object? All right. Very good. Thank you, Max. All right. Um, anyone else in the message board stated? All right. Steven and Jose, yes. I don't know if you're having problems on your end, but we have moved on, and I have given the warning for your speakers as well. All right. Now, multimeters, uh, we can also measure voltage, but they can also measure resistance as well uh, in ohms. Okay. No. All right. Now, the way voltage works in a series circuit, as we already know, um, the it, it's shared voltage. So as it's coming from a battery cell, like in your case, the two batteries, you have three volts, and it ends up sharing for each bulb 1.5 volts. So if you increase the amount of bulbs, you're going to decrease your voltage. In a parallel circuit, it's the same across. Um, each bulb will, have, will be getting three volts, okay? Now, also with a multimeter, you can measure current as well. Um, we can uh, measure current in amps. Uh, all right. Now, in amps, when you're measuring amps, for, which is current, it's almost the inverse with regards to uh, voltage in these circuits. Uh, in a series circuit, the amps stay the same. But in a parallel circuit, they become uh, shared. All right? So, and just, just as a review, uh, what is an electric current? Uh, as we know, electric current is electrons flowing, and they flow from uh, the negative to the positive, okay? Now, we're going to have a few review questions. All right, so what I want you to do is raise your hand when you have a chance. Um, with, for the first question, explain what happens to the current in a series circuit when there is a break in the circuit. What will take place? All right. Luke has his hand up. Let's go with Luke. Go ahead, Luke. Um, if a current in the series breaks, the whole series will go out. Okay. Very good. All right. Excellent. Let's check on your answer. Yep. Very good, very good. All right, let's go with the next question. Explain what happens to the bulb. Very nice job, Luke. Um, explain what happens to the voltage across each bulb as more bulbs are added to the circuit. Can someone answer that question for me? All right, let's go with uh, Max. Go ahead, Max. Um, when each bulb is added, um, when a, you, Every bulb that is added to the circuit, um, all the bulbs get a, a little bit um, duller. Okay, very good. Very good. Let's go ahead and check out that, that answer. Nope. Sir clicks a lot for your turn today. Uh, the voltage decreases because the current is decreased. Very good. Our resistance increases. Very good. Very good, Max. Thank you. Nice job. All right. Now, let's, let's review parallel circuits. Can someone tell me what happens to the current each bulb as more bulbs are added to the circuit? 
with regards to a parallel circuit. All right, go ahead and raise your hand. Let me know what you think of that. All right, see Evan's hand went up. Go ahead, Evan. Um, I'm thinking really quick. Um, but for the first question, the yeah. reason why all the bulbs would go out <clears throat> is because is because the wire connects with the bulbs, and the bulbs connect to the positive. And if one bulb goes out, the positive cannot be reached to all the other bulbs, so everything goes out. Okay, very good. Now, what about with a parallel circuit? Um, Looking at this question, explain what happens to the current each bulb as more bulbs are added. It just adds more light until it can't take any more lights. All right. Now, the thing we got to remember is that the current will stay the same within parallel circuits because it has multiple pathways. It's um, not mm -hmm. like a series. Instead of series, you're uh, sharing. But with parallel, it's not. But the resistance will drop. All right? Thank yeah. you, Evan. All right. Let's try the next question. Um, explain what happens to the total current provided by the battery as more bulbs are added in a parallel circuit. What will happen? Let's go with Brendan. Brendan, go ahead. Um, well, I was, I was going to answer for the one right before. And I, uh, and I never put down my hand. Oh, uh, okay. So uh, go ahead and add on to the first one then. I was going to say that if you put another one out, well, I don't think this is correct, but I was going to say um, you, if you added one bulb in, then it would flow to that bulb and light it up. And then if you added another one, the energy would flow and light that one up as well. Okay, good. Good. Thank you very much, Brendan. Excellent job. All right. Uh, can someone answer my second question, please? Okay, Stephen and Jose stating that the circuit will not run out, which is correct. Good job, Stephen and Jose. Um, with explaining what happens to the total current, let's review. Um, Luke, you want to give this a shot? Go ahead, Luke. Um, if... If more bulbs are added to the circuit, um, less and less um, current can go through. Um, it, it loses voltage as it goes through the circuit. So if more bulbs are added, less light appears in the bulbs, um, meaning it will, um, there's not enough voltage to provide for all of them at once. All right, let's double check that. All right. Um, so what ends up happening here, thank you, Luke. Um, we keep adding more bulbs, but our current will keep going um, it, because we end up sharing our voltage. All right. Well, thank you. Yeah, the amps. Very good. Very good. Thank you, Luke. All right. Well, let's move forward. We're gonna now. We're gonna uh, change pace. We're gonna start looking at resistance. All right. All right. Um, resistors resist the flow of electricity. Resistance depends on the type of material. All right. Um, basically, we're looking at conductors and insulators. Conductors are they have a low resistance, meaning that electrons flow through them very easily. Electricity and or temperature flows through them easily. Um, these are things that silver, copper, gold, aluminum, iron are traditional metals that you think of. All right. Now, insulators are on the opposite side of this. Insulators uh, are things that... slow down the flow of electrons. And you're thinking of and these typical things like glass, rubber, oils. The, these are insulators, okay? Now, within your 
snap circuit kit. You have R1, R2, R3, R4, and R5. These are all the resistors that you have in your kit. When you, if you end up taking Young Engineers in seventh and eighth grade, you'll go into a little bit more of Mr. Dubik about each, you can actually quantify and break down what each resistor is. Because uh, resistors, if you look at the res uh, R1 through R5 in there, it, it has actual resistor built in on top, and they have lines of colors. Those lines of colors, you can get a chart, a resistor chart, and actually you can calculate how much resistance it has. All right, which is a pretty cool concept. So you can do the mathematics behind how much resistance there is. Now, what I want you to do now is actually experiment with seeing how resistors work. Use each of the resistors in a, in a series circuit, R1 through R5, and connect your LED. Remember, your LED can only go in one direction. If you understand these instructions, raise your hand now. Um, Brendan, steel would be a, uh, a conductor. It's a metal. Okay. All right, go ahead, everyone, and let's build this. And once you're done, let me know by raising your hand and or putting a message in. Okay? But make observations of what happens to the brightness of your LED bulb. Remember, an LED is a diode, so it only has a positive and negative side, so you're going to have to have it set up correctly. The type of circuit you're doing is a series circuit. And here are the, all the parts that you would need to do this, Stephen and Jose. Hopefully that helps, Steve and Jose. Just let me know by typing in. All right, Max, no big deal on it, not raising your hand. Don't worry about it. All right, thanks, Max.
Yes, Luke. Unmuted. Um, it's not working for me. Uh, which directions is your LED going? In the right direction. All right. Um, what resistor are you using? I'm using 100K. So you're using R5? Yep. Use R1 right now and see what happens. All right. Still not working. Flip your LED, please. Oh, battery fell out. All right. So it's a hardware okay. issue. Oh, it's working now. All right. Now slowly increase up. You go from R1 to R2 to R3 to R4 to R5, Luke. All right? Okay. Thank you. Stephen Jose stated that the bigger the number, the larger the uh, resistance, the dimmer the light got. Very good. R5 doesn't work because it, re re, um, it is resisting way too much current. So you're not getting enough energy to actually turn on your LED. All right. Awesome job. Yes, I got your message, Stephen Jose. Very good, Jose. Very good. All right. I see a lot of people are done. All right. That was the point. Resistors, as you increase the resistance, it will limit the amount of energy. Just like we looked at last week about uh, rocks in a stream. It slows down the water, right? If you slow it down too much, you actually won't get enough energy to use in your circuit. Okay. All right, moving on. This will be our probably close to our last activity for the night. All right, what I'd like you to do is experiment with creating a parallel circuit using resistors. Use two LEDs now and try it out with the different resistors and see what happens. All right, if you understand the instructions, raise your hand. All right, excellent job, everyone. Go ahead and try that out. Once you're done, let me know.
All right, everyone. Um, I see a lot of people typed in. Did the same thing. Great. So resistors, the point is the resistors will work the same exact way in a series circuit as well as a parallel circuit. Uh, they make no difference. Okay. All right, everyone. Um, we're going to stop there tonight. It is uh, 7.30. Now, uh, just to let you all know, uh, for next class, what I want you to do is think of a project out of your books that you would want to share with the class. And that's all I'm going to tell you. Uh, the rest will be in store for next class. All right. Well, thank you, everyone, for your participation tonight. You all did a fantastic job. Uh, and we will continue next Wednesday, this upcoming Wednesday in 48 hours from now in using um, your snap circuits as well. And we will continue moving forward with that. Now, at this time, unless you have any questions, uh, please let me know. If not, we can. Um, you're welcome. Uh, I'm Stephen Jose. I appreciate your participation, your feedback, and all the hard work you're putting into it. And that goes for everyone as well. All right. Anyone else, just raise your hand if you have a question, comment, concern. Uh, you are welcome, Evan, Max. Um, everyone else, have a great night. Um, and thank you, as always, for being a part of Young Engineers today. Have a great evening, everyone, and a good week. Bye-bye.